One of the things um, that I've been looking at is the pre-Socratics mm -hmm. and um, Parmenides, the, more more than anyone else, and also that um, the piece he wrote, which is uh, has the fragments left of it. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to what's left of Heraclides, to just little snippets of, mm -hmm. of what they had written. And um, the, one of the things that is attractive is that because it touches on the, um, the theme of the one and the many, mm -hmm. again and again, and a theme that um, brings us up to the present in uh, many ways because we <clears throat> also look at a way of, of um, finding that unity in ourselves, in the world, mm -hmm. of the one, and um, seeing how it, seeing how we can live in a way that that's stronger than the duality that exists all around us, the yeah. duality of the yes and the no, the right and the wrong, the endless duality, right? Yes. Yes. Endless. Yeah. Which which is contradictory for me, but it is. I mean, it's contradictory, but it's also omnipresent. Mm -hmm. So, so that the way to go on, the way to to find that unity, um, we had talked about, and Parmenides had talked about it too, is that it has to do with looking inward. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's not in the stars, or it is in the stars. Maybe it is in a way of, um, in a way, well, we had talked about this before, in a way that process becomes the same as cosmology in the sense of the being, representing the overall, the... Yeah. But if you look, I think they also understood it in a, at least, uh, it, some of, of those cultures understood it, uh -huh. uh, or maybe in the sense that, for example, if if you go to Machu Picchu, uh -huh. you, you, there's a point there in which there are like like two uh, uh, con concave uh, cuts in the stone, uh -huh. and that was filled with water, uh -huh. and the stars would reflect on that. Uh -huh. And so, uh, the 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 priest or the sorcerer or whoever would look into that and see it inside, uh -huh. as well as the representation that you have uh, of the planets inside you when they do the astrology, which uh -huh. is so useful up to today in India, for example. Uh -huh. Nothing, no enterprise is done without consulting the astrological side. It looks crazy, but that's how it is. Uh -huh, uh -huh. If you want to marry or if you want to begin an enterprise or whatever, uh -huh. it's seen first which would be the most auspicious day and all that, uh -huh, or uh -huh. time. Uh -huh. So it's, it's seen as something within. Uh -huh. Well, it's that's really seen. interesting about the pool reflecting the yeah. stars yeah. and seeing it as inside. Yes. Uh -huh. And I think in the, in, 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 in the Arthurian myths also, uh -huh. of King Arthur. Uh -huh, that, uh -huh. is, uh, that they also have this uh, seeing in the mirror, uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> the mirror of the soul. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's, it's, it's a, it's, I think they also, it, it's, it's not that, uh, it, it's not seeing the stars outside, it's, it's really seeing them inside, but the people well, will see them outside too, uh -huh. but it's uh, you have to. You have. You, I think you have to look at it uh, inward as uh -huh, well uh -huh. to understand them, because without understanding the register of the heart, it's very difficult to uh -huh. uh, <laughs> right to make it real. <laughs> yes. Right. Very. Mm -hmm. Yes, the register of the heart. So w that was um. Back to the one in the many. 
their um, how in those old and the other cultures how is that represented? Because we had that I know that in some senses we had talked about uh, in the matriarchal society the earth was the one mm -hmm. you could say right which would be the Ptolemyan approach uh -huh. as, the, as the earth the center of the yes of the universe uh -huh. right and not the sun uh -huh. right but but it's not even it's 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 the inner sun or the inner uh -huh. earth or whatever uh -huh. it's uh -huh. the universe itself is can be seen in one point uh -huh. uh, <laughs> but that's a it, I mean you have to go into it or work it and yes I, I think it's difficult to uh, to I mean these are abstractions they are or n even more than abstractions they're outside representation yeah so then the to to take the rational mind to it is um, in many ways a no-win situation no win because just because it keeps on creating the duality to try to understand yeah. there 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 is a way some uh, which which uh, which can permit an approach which would be what the Indians call the bhakti approach the devotional side uh -huh, uh -huh. And, and it is a way of understanding certain concepts in the heart uh -huh. for example in the one of the Upanishads, I mean, they, they have this, uh, the, what is called the Shanti path. Uh, and it, it's, it's a text in which uh, you, you can meditate on certain basic elements and uh -huh. uh, feel them. Uh -huh. For example, uh, they ask for happiness, to attain happiness, uh -huh. to attain peace, uh, to attain oneness. Uh -huh. <laughs> And, and to attain auspiciousness uh -huh. or, or prosperity in a more material sense. Uh -huh. So those four elements are, are there, and they ask for that in, the, in, the, in this. But they begin with, with, a, with a, a three, three phrases. This is, these are very interesting. Uh, and uh, they are uh, uh, from, the un, from the unreal or the illusion, take me to the real. Uh -huh. to reality uh -huh. uh, or to truth uh, from the uh, death take me to immortality uh -huh. uh, from darkness take me to light uh -huh. then uh, if you think those three phrases uh -huh. and you, you, you put them in it's much like uh, uh, the philokalia for the Christians uh -huh. Uh -huh. that is you really Put that oneness inside you. Uh huh. Right. 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 The Jesus prayer. Yeah. The yeah. Jesus prayer. Uh huh. So uh, I think I think there is not much difference in one thing or the other. Uh -huh. I think the Muslims have probably that oneness too. Uh -huh. is, everything must go to Allah, which is one. Uh huh. Right. right. So I mean, in, in in I think in most religions, uh, that concept is there. Uh huh. It's misunderstood uh -huh. because of the noise of the world and the noise of the mind. Sure, right, of course, of course. <laughs> I really like what you were saying about the three questions. From let's say them again. The yeah, I can. I can even say them in Sanskrit. Okay, well, yes. the, so that I can understand. <laughs> okay, from the unreal uh -huh. or. The illusion uh -huh. take me to what is real. Uh -huh. <laughs> and what's the Sanskrit? Asatoma <laughs> sadkamaya. Okay, good. <laughs> then from uh, death, uh, no, from uh, darkness, take me to light. Uh huh. Tamasoma uh, jyotirgamaya. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> then finally, from uh, 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 death. Take me to immortality. Uh huh. Amrita Oh. Amrita. Yes. And the Sanskrit has. A, uh, yeah, well, it has a different writing, but that I don't know. Uh -huh. I mean, we would have our friends 
from India maybe <laughs> are more <laughs> diligent in uh -huh, that. Uh -huh. But this is, it has a sound too, it which does. is very important. Yes, it does very much have a sound. Yeah. And that one of the sounds that it seems is that there, there's an overlap, sonic overlap, <laughs> between the three statements. Yes. They're not that far apart in terms of their, no. the sounds of the words. Yeah. I think the, that's why I think the sound is very important because you, uh, you it, well, music is is, uh -huh. is is also pause, and it has sure. all those things. I mean, I'm not you're much more learned in music than me. So uh -huh. you, you, uh, but it's uh, I think it's it's important in in the sound uh -huh. without sound, um, right? Without sound and silence, yeah. right? Yeah, even in, in the Christian, in principio era verbum, no? uh -huh. without the word, <laughs> uh <-huh>. there's no... <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> right. You mean the Genesis? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. or, or the St. John. Uh-huh, right. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, very nice stuff. Very lovely. Very lovely. So back to the um, pre-Socratics. Yeah. Just for the hell of it. That's good. That's your <laughs> that, that's that's your theme. The yeah. Socratics. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but they should be everybody's themes because they were really interesting people. Yes, really interesting. <laughs> that, right. There are lots of things there were that that came, became clear in the various books that I've read about it. Um, one was that uh, that um, what uh, people who developed themselves developed themselves mentally, but also they were healers mm -hmm. and they were lawmakers. Yeah. So there's a quality at which the the, the you could say the quality is. Um, They take, they, they, they develop their social aspect, their, their aspect of the body, the health, and the aspect of society, the law, mm -hmm. all of that together. And philosophy didn't exist as a mental thing at all. It, mm -hmm. it was part of that. It only came out of those elements, those, you could say, or that way, that way of being. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was the equivalent uh, to the Brahmins in a way, because the Brahmins weren't the rulers. Uh -huh. The Kshatriyas were the rulers. Uh -huh. But the Brahmins were the ones that were, in some way, uh, giving the insight to to, uh, to the wisdom of a ruler if he was wise. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, and I think it, 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 in Greece maybe that was the spirit. I mean they were not the rulers, uh -huh. uh, but they were, the philosophers were giving the, uh, like, the insight to the rulers. Yeah, well once they became philosophers, they lost the, they lost the point. The point, yeah. Which was to have to incorporate the healing and the Lawmaking, mm -hmm. all in other words, to be ho whole, you could say, as a human being, rather than specialized in your head. Mm -hmm. So it's by the time we got into Athens, it was already gone. Gone. Yeah. And that's why Anatolia, I guess, is more or less the yes southern Italy, and and and, and Turkey and. Turkey. and and some of the islands. And some of the islands, exactly, mm -hmm. right. It was the center, Crete, I guess. Yes. And that's where also there were matriarchal societies. Definitely. Yeah. Although the philosophers were all men, but except for one or two exceptions, uh -huh. I think. Right. Uh, because in later the, periods. Right. They were, but they weren't. But it was only a manifestation, you could say. Yeah. 
they were men, but they, only as a manifestation mm -hmm. of this, what surrounded them, which was this matriarchal. Yes, world in which they lived. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Which we've already talked about had its own non-war ethic. Non-war ethic, which would, or you could say, um, peaceful coexistence. Uh, mm -hmm. Lots of different ways of saying the same thing. Yeah. So, okay, pre Socratics. Only because one of the things that um, had troubled me in, um, is that uh, as, not as a Buddhist, but as a follower of Buddha. It all as a young man, mm -hmm. more or less as an adult, let's see. Mm -hmm. I had always, um, I was always a bit outside myself yeah. in that sense, right? Because it wasn't where I grew up. It wasn't my, it wasn't what formed me mm -hmm. in, as a child. Because I was unquestionably a Westerner. Sure. All of us. Yeah. I mean, same with me. Uh-huh. Uh, I became interested in the Eastern philosophy when I read a Westerner, Huxley. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I'm lots. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for me. Sure. Uh, and from there, I went into reading the Upanishads and other texts. Uh-huh. But Emma Chodron Tambien. Yeah. Sure. And Buddha. And Buddha, of course. But before that, I mean, uh, we were totally absorbed by our... our, our Buddha as a Westerner, you're saying? Yes. Uh-huh. Well... He was, indeed. He came from India, right? He came from India. Yeah. But he... Uh, uh, his... His teachings were not really known in the West uh -huh, right. until much later. Right. They weren't. I agree. But they were known in the East. In the East, yes, definitely. Uh -huh. I mean, it's and developed. Yes. And but, taken. But the West hasn't, uh, until maybe uh, some of the transmissions of studies that were done 17th century, 18th century, travelers and uh -huh. brought a few things and then towards the 19th century I think much more was developed. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, Max Müller with all his translations, groups that translated different texts from all over um, and so many other interesting authors that understood. And then finally uh, uh, Jung uh -huh. which, which read uh, the the golden the secret of the golden flower and the I Ching and and, and he saw the unity of that uh -huh. and the utility of that in 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 the concept of of, of psychology. Uh -huh. Before that, I mean, they hadn't even recognized that there was a different psychology uh -huh. altogether. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right. Uh, but since Jung was quite famous in the West, then they could, oh, ah, yes, that's interesting. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's go into it. Uh -huh. Because he read Wilhelm's translation uh -huh, of uh -huh. the Yi and the Golden Flower. Yeah, right. But which I read also when uh -huh. I was young. <laughs> so, so did I, as a young man. Yes. Yeah. I went to pick up my copy, and all the pages fell out. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I said, "Okay, never mind." <laughs> no, it happens. Yeah, right. <laughs> So anyway, yes, how wonderful that. Yeah, what a story. Yeah, the Brahmins and, um, and Buddha. And yes, and bringing it back home, how to do that. Indeed. <laughs> not an easy task. No, not an easy task, right. You could say it's uh, counter-revolutionary. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is hard. <laughs> yeah, so, but um, you're, you seem to be doing a good job yourself. 
I mean, I see what I see from you is the, this ability to pull in sources from everywhere to build up a, a kind of a new landscape for yourself. Well, that's I've been trying that for for years. I mean, we've yes. we've been involved in all this for so many years, but sometimes you know you go up and down. Uh huh. Uh, uh, but 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 I think if you have your purpose clear, uh huh, uh, at least more or less clear, uh -huh. you, you, you try to understand where you're going. Right. And I think this is, a, and the, it's not a going outside, it's also a going outside, but it's really a going within. Uh -huh. And you can go within as you walk outside too. Uh -huh. <laughs> right, you can. It's clear. <laughs> that's, <laughs> I think that's, that's the best part of uh -huh. the whole thing. And as we grow older, which is, I mean, we've passed the, the generation uh, of the, the young people, uh, you also become more aware of many things because you have your long biography behind, uh -huh. which you try to synthesize as quick as possible because yes. it's always much the same, uh, uh -huh. with the same tendencies repeating over and over sure, again. Sure, right, repetition, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A whole different story. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's interesting because if you are uh, receptive, uh, it's as if uh, the things that you're looking for appear. Uh -huh. It's not magic. It's simply uh, trying to synchronize with the world. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Tune, tune, tune in. in with the world. Yes, right. I like that word. Uh, yes. It started to show up a couple of years ago about tuning in. and. Synchrona. In Spanish, it was a word I didn't recognize right away. It comes from probably from Latin. Synchronization uh -huh. is a Spanish word. Right. But it's uh, uh, yeah, it's synchronizing would be yeah, tuning in. It's uh -huh. really the same thing. Right. Uh, making uh, making it uh, uh, like a, a, a chord. It's, it's, yeah, when you when, when you have an instrument, you, uh -huh. have, to, you have to yeah, just. <laughs> Adjust yes. the chords. Adjust to find the resonance. Yes, yeah, that's it. And once you get it, it's very clear. Mm -hmm. It's very clear. Oh, there it is. Yeah. And I think this happens when you enter a, a bookstore or something like uh -huh, that. I mean, uh -huh. you're not looking for something in particular, or you may be looking for something in particular. So you just go in, and, and all of a sudden, it starts coming. Uh huh, uh huh. Right. You don't know how, nor why, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, yeah. it's there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's like your, your visit. Yeah. It's like having you here. Oh, that, it, <laughs> this has been a wonderful thing. I mean, I've enjoyed every moment of it. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it's like that, too. It's like you bring in things that, you know, I didn't ask for them or look. I wasn't looking, but they, they've appeared, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's why we're sitting here, because it was so... It's been such an auspicious occasion to have you here in the house, yeah, staying well, with us. I'm grateful that, that this has been possible. <laughs> uh -huh. I am too. I am. That's what I'm saying right now. I'm mm -hmm. grateful. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm also saying that this has been my bookstore, in a way, you know, that, I, that uh, this, these things that I haven't asked for have, but th that I have things that I've been looking for without knowing. Mm -hmm. well, what they were. You could well, say. this this is equal. It's reciprocal. It's reciprocal uh -huh. in a way because also there have been some books and other themes that that, that you have mentioned uh -huh. that have clear clarified aspects of my search as uh -huh. well uh -huh. that I hadn't fully understood. This question of this this book on the uh, on the Australian. Aborigines, for example. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's very interesting. Uh -huh, it is. It was called Song Lines. Yes, Song Lines. Yeah. Very interesting book. And, uh, and well, so many other things. It just happens that way. Uh -huh, and, right. And, and if, 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 if your mind is receptive, uh, it comes. Uh -huh. And I think that's the basic, the basic point. Uh, so many people just live in the dream world. And, uh -huh. They don't recognize, uh, uh, like the, uh, 
lands, uh, la landmarks in, 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 in a dream uh -huh. that could really awaken them to a new reality. Uh -huh. Now you were, your context was, is um, pilgrimage? Well, I've, I did a little work some years ago uh -huh. uh, for 19, I think it was 207, but that's, it's a minor thing. It uh -huh. was just something I prepared for that meeting we had in Punta de Vac. Uh -huh. that right. song. But, but in the, yeah, I've been thinking about that in the future. I think that theme is very important because the pilgrimage is really, uh, why are we here? Uh -huh. and where are we going? Uh -huh. And it's just like living, uh, your life is a pilgrimage uh -huh. in, in, in the way you seek. I sure. Think, I think this is this is would be like the correct approach. Uh -huh. and some authors have gone into it, but it's 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 not walking uh, externally. It's it's walking your own process uh -huh. Uh -huh. as it as it as you move as uh -huh. it evolves. Uh -huh. Right. It's 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 something I've had in mind, and I always have it in mind. Uh huh. But yeah, walking is very interesting. I. I use it as a way of life here in New York. Yeah. Because it's possible. Yeah, it is. I don't need a car. No, no. And um, that's really meaningful to me because it's a way of, uh, it's a kind of independence. Yeah. That, that um, the society is disregarded, you could say. Yeah. It's and they say you have to drive. Wherever you go, you need a car. You can't live without a car. And you can. You can, definitely. Yeah. It's possible. But there's a way, also what you were saying, but I, the reason I brought it up was because of the, not that, but because of the pace of walking through your process. Mm -hmm. The way you brought it, the way you spoke of it, is very clear to me that, it, that it, it's about that pace. There's also another element of this walking, and that is, um, and I think it's going to the places uh -huh. uh, that uh, really uh, have meaning, uh, not only to you, but internally, but also uh, to the process of the myths. Uh -huh. And uh, there are not many in the world, but there, I think there are m many more than what people may think. Uh -huh. And uh, when, when you read at a later stage something that relates to a place where you have been, uh -huh. uh, it comes alive uh -huh. in the reading. Uh -huh. right. Whereas if you have never been there, uh, it's, it's like seeing it through... Um, a veil. A veil. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. right. and, and it's not the same thing. Uh -huh. And m many people just stay in the television scene. Which is a way, uh -huh. of, but it, it, it's it's more external. It's 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 like a filtered way. Sure. It's, the other is you just get the feeling of the place. You touch the stones of the place, uh -huh, uh -huh. and and you get the the energy that yeah. is there. Right. Which is really important. And that's real traveling. It is. Uh, yeah. It's not just this blunt tourism of going from one hotel to another. Uh -huh. it's, it's useless. Yes, right. Uh, I mean, it, it may help, but it's not. It's not the thing. And uh -huh. I think in this, uh, if you want to do some work, you have to go to the places. Uh huh. Right. In, in inner work. Uh, so these places, like let's say, let's say, which places have affected you like that? Well, my trip to Iran, for example, was uh -huh. very interesting. Uh huh. Because it took me deep into the Zoroastrian mind. Uh huh. To see things that are no longer there. There's about 15,000 Zoroastrians living in Iran, no more. Uh -huh. Even though they have a member in Congress, but well, that's because the Ayatollahs permit that. But, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but, but let's let's. The, the interesting thing is to see uh, those towers of silence, to see those fire temples, uh -huh. and to really see the fire that's been there and lit without for 700 years or more uh -huh. without ever having been put out. Uh -huh. This is this, then you, you, you get like the, you,
contact. Is this a fire that's kept going, or it's, is it from no, the earth or something? You know, it's going. It. They have a, like a big, like a big uh, matrix there. Somebody there. feeds Somebody. it. There's a there's a Moab there that's constantly feeding it all the time uh -huh, uh -huh. and keeping that alive. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Wow. How, how many years? Seven hundred. Seven hundred. That was the that was the date they mentioned. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of generations of a fire lot of generation. Yeah. <laughs> That's many, one. India, many, many. yeah. India is another place. Yeah. I mean, I've been to many places there because I lived there so many years. But, uh -huh. but still, uh, it, it, wherever you go, you you feel it. You feel the the, the reality of the place. Uh huh.